Hello and welcome to Talking Europe. After more than a year of lockdowns and curfews, people across Europe are desperate for a normal summer of travel and tourism. My guest today says that that normality cannot be guaranteed as of yet. Clément Beaune is France's Secretary of State for European Affairs and a close confidant of President Emmanuel Macron. I'm joining him at the French Foreign Ministry to discuss the vaccine rollout in Europe, vaccine certificates, economic recovery, and the future of the European Union as the EU marks Europe Day on May the 9th. Mr. Byrne, thank you so much for being my thank guest you. on Talking Europe. Let's talk about Europe's vaccine rollout, first of all. If we look at the figures from May the 3rd, we see that in most EU countries, the percentage of people who've received both doses is still very low, around 10% or less. What do you make of those uh, latest figures? Well, I think uh, we have to look at the bigger picture. We have started slower than other countries, it's true, than the US or than Great Britain or Israel, but we are accelerating very fast. We are approaching the moment around June where a large majority of the adult population will be fully vaccinated. We will uh, increase this pace. And uh, I think we also have to look as Europeans at how we dealt with this vaccination campaign. Which, what is true is that at the very beginning, I think probably more than a year ago, we were probably a bit less risk averse than some others, Americans uh, or, or Great Britain, in terms of financing uh, all the vaccines that were possible to develop on the market. And that created some delay in our vaccination campaign. We are accelerating, we are producing a lot. At the same time, we're also producing or providing international solidarity, which is very important. If we had done differently, in terms of internal European solidarity or international solidarity, I think the situation in each of our countries would be much more difficult now because we would have left entire territories or countries developing variants of the virus, the virus itself, for the last months or weeks. So it was also, I think, very important from a health point of view to have this collective vaccination campaign at the European level, and we are catching up at the moment. As I said in my introduction, uh, uh, you, you've said that uh, normality might not return this summer in the EU in terms of travel, freedom of travel. Uh, what do you expect to happen with the digital certificate? Uh, will this allow people to not have to quarantine this summer if they're going between EU countries? Well, it's very important also, as you say, to improve this European coordination. I think we are talking about vaccination pace, that we will be nearly at the British or American level at the beginning of the summer in terms of protection of the population. And we will need, we would want, to find more uh, ability to move around Europe, to travel for tourism, for holidays, and we have to coordinate on this. And this is why we developed a, a common European, what we call the green certificate, yeah. which will uh, be the same system, the same code in your smartphone or on a piece of yeah. paper at the beginning of the summer already to prove that you are either vaccinated or tested negative uh, to travel and, around Europe. And the idea is if, if somebody has been vaccinated, they don't have to quarantine on arrival. Exactly. Is that, and, that's correct. And I mean, each country will have to decide on its own measures in this framework, recognizing right. this certificate in all EU countries yeah. during the summer. The idea is precisely to avoid to have more restrictive measures as we do know now, like quarantine. Mm -hmm. We hope so very much. And as for non-EU uh, countries, it's too early to say to what extent and in what timing we will be able to open more, yeah. but probably during the summer, we will uh, have a, a list of countries uh, in which the vaccine is developed, recognized by the EU, and for these countries, we would be able to open a bit more probably. I, I gather that you've recently started talks with the, the United Kingdom on some sort of mutual recognition of digital uh, passes and so forth. Um, do you expect that there will be something in place for travelers between the UK and the EU this summer as well? It's too early to, to be certain about it, but uh, we do want to have first, as EU, a European system. Yeah. Our priority is to find 
this possibility to have this possibility to travel more freely around Europe within the EU. And then with some countries like the US or like the UK, yeah. in which there is a high level of vaccination, a better health situation, uh, we uh, have to uh, organize interaction, a common certificate maybe. We are working on this at this moment to, uh, to have this mobility between uh, the EU and these countries. It's too early to say when we will be able to do so, but we are certainly working on it. Let me ask you about um, recovery plans, which, of course, member states of the EU, EU have been submitting to uh, the European Commission so that it, it can have a look at the different plans. Uh, this was agreed last summer, actually, a 750 billion euro recovery plan. That was agreed before the second wave of the virus and even before the third wave. So do you think this money st is still relevant or is there going to have to be more stimulus? We have to be very precise about what we talk about. This mm. plan we agreed last summer is a recovery plan. Mm. What the second wave of the pandemic or sometimes the third wave created is an emergency need for more money, for more support mm. uh, in terms of supporting small companies, uh, jobs and so on. We did so. In all our countries, we increased the level of support in France, in Germany, in the UK, outside the EU, in the US. We all did this uh, uh, support, we increased this support very much. So we cannot say that we stayed at the level agreed last summer in terms of emergency support. Mm. And now we have to develop and to accelerate this recovery phase, this recovery plan, to strengthen our economies in the digital transition, in the green transition after the crisis, mm. to help this recovery and make it quicker and bigger. And we have first to implement fully this recovery plan, yeah. uh, to develop the investments uh, that this recovery plan can support. And then we will see in the coming months if we have at the European level or at the national level, or both, yeah. to do more efforts in terms of recovery and investment. But it has to, it's very important to, 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 to underline that in the EU, we were extremely strong in this emergency support increased in the second and third waves and probably stronger than the US actually. How do you think the EU though can recover as a whole when there's such a difference in the amount of money in these different national plans. I mean, for example, the Italian plan is a much bigger amount of money than the German one, for example. Uh, why are these differences there? And are they not going to slow down the overall recovery, do you think? Because when you look at the level of emergency support provided by the di different national governments, uh, if you look at the big Eurozone economies, it's quite similar when you look at the money which was actually spent because sometimes money is voted, a plan is voted in parliament, but when you look at the money actually spent for companies, for jobs and so on, the levels between EU countries are quite close to each other. And then for the recovery plan, uh, agreed at the EU level, there are differences in the level of uh, benefits of money received by the different member states, because there is an element of solidarity in this plan, which I think is good for everyone, because, for instance, Italy receives more money than Germany, mm. even if it's a smaller economy, because Italy has been more affected by the crisis, especially by the first wave of the crisis. So that was exactly the plan we agreed last summer. We need, in this case, to help Italy more than others for the benefits of our common economic and monetary zone. This is a big uh, change that the recovery plan introduced in the European uh, economic situation, and this is good news. Just briefly, we've got very little time, unfortunately, but as Europe marks, or the EU, I should say, marks uh, Europe Day on May the 9th, uh, what does this day mean to you, and how do you think the coronavirus pandemic has impacted the European project? It's a, a day which commemorates uh, the Schuman Declaration made uh, 71 years ago, just after the Second World War. And we have to remember this first. Never forget that. We need uh, common memories, common uh, thinking, to be aware that Europe was destroyed after the war and some people, a small number of people actually, were crazy enough and visionary enough to say we should reconcile and we should build a project together. Ne let's never forget that, even in a time when it's difficult because it was far more difficult at that time. And the crisis shows that there are some shortcomings, 
some limits in the European action, as we saw in the area of health, for instance. We have to draw lessons from this to be more ambitious in terms of investment, to act more as Europeans in some areas like health, and also to understand better the need for sovereignty. We realized during the crisis that sometimes we are not producing enough in terms of face masks, in terms of basic medical products like paracetamol, sometimes the vaccines at the beginning of the campaign. Now we have to increase, we have to product more and to be more sovereign, autonomous at the EU level. I think this would be a good lesson to learn for Europe Day. We'll have to end it there. Thank you so much, Clément Bourne. And uh, that's all for this part of Talking Europe, but we'll be back in a few minutes with the second part of the programme, so don't go away. Mm -hmm.